The mega El Nino's impact is already being felt throughout drought-stricken California, with snow in the mountains, rain in the valleys, which means flooding, flash flooding, and mudslides, as the parched earth of the Golden State gets some relief from this four-year-old exceptional drought. However, just as quickly as this mega El Nino arrives, it will collapse and be overtaken by La Nina in 2016. El Nino may be dominating the headlines, but here at WT360, we track 24 climate cycles and their trends from the prior year, which is 61 trillions of trillions of iterations. So just focusing on El Nino or a handful of climate indices is a recipe for failure when it comes to accurate long-range forecasting. Since 2006, we've entered the start of a 30-year cold, snowy cycle for much of the Northern Hemisphere. But this year is most likely an exception. But next winter and a few winters thereafter will return us to epic cold and snow for much of the U.S. The trends of climate indices are dramatically different than last year. PDO, ENZO are dramatically warmer than last year. EPO, much colder. So the climate cycle for this winter is the polar opposite of last year much above average ocean temperatures surrounding the U.S. It'll be tough to get brutal cold like the past few winters, but there will be some cold snaps around Christmas, middle January, middle February, and early March for the U.S. overall. The very strong subtropical jet stream associated with El Nino will trump the polar jet stream, keeping the polar vortex centered more over Eastern Europe, Western Russia, and Central Siberia, Northern China. We see the Great Lakes and Northeast showing the greatest change toward a much warmer winter than last year, with above average temperatures from Texas to Minnesota and points north and east. The slightly below average temperatures out west are not due to major polar outbreaks, but rather more clouds and rain, same in the southeast. One thing is nearly certain, California will have a long rainy winter, trending the wettest in 11 years. Enjoy Californians as this is the one year of wet followed by a resumption of the drought cycle that's likely to last at least another 20 plus years. While the central U.S. will trend much wetter than last year's extremely dry winter, the overall trends are still a tad below average for the winter months overall. With El Nino's, it's common to get a few big wet storms, but there will also be longer periods of mild dry weather, so when it does rain, it will likely be heavy. Snow is indeed a four-letter word and very difficult to predict by month, but statistics and climate cycles do allow for some high-level trending forecasts. As we've already seen this fall, the storms ejecting out of the southwest U.S. will favor a Midwest track, which will likely be just west of Chicago. Many of these storms will be wet versus white, as we won't have a huge cold source of air, with Canada likely to be near record warm. The track from the southwest into Wisconsin could bring near average snowfall and a couple of pockets of above average snowfall, but most of the heavier snows reserved for the southwest and south central Rocky Mountains. A big ice storm or two are more common in the east. There's a chance one could bring a severe ice storm with major power outages. The east coast is likely spared after two snowy winters with one big caveat. It's very possible we get one big nor'easter snowstorm where most of the winter snowfall comes in that one storm. Overall, it's a disappointing winter for snow enthusiasts in the east. Nationally, it's the least snowfall in four years and below average. Signing up for your zip code year ahead forecast from WT360, you get charting, trending, and calendar tools highlighting your daily, weekly temperatures, growing degree days, heating and cooling degree days, rainfall totals, snowfall trends, custom alerts, daily two-week snowfall reports, along with access to our business ag meteorologists. This example shows the forecast outside WT360 headquarters. You'll love the proactive value of our web tools. So, what does the outlook tell us about global impacts to the ag industry? Well, more high risk. Winter in the Northern Hemisphere is summer in Brazil, and their crops have many challenges ahead. Their growing season's off to the hottest in 25 plus years and driest in 12. That has delayed the planting of soybeans. This is significant as it will now delay the safrina crop, and many Mato Grosso farmers have pre-sold their corn with concerns on whether they'll have a crop on time. Our forecast suggests the pain is just starting as they have the hottest summer in six years with below average rainfall and even drier in the late summer with the hottest and driest conditions in nine years with well below average rainfall through May of 2016. This will very likely bring a surge in corn prices in spring of 2016 before U.S. farmers even get started. 
Southwest areas are where most of the corn and soybeans are planted. That area looks particularly unfavorable with hot and dry conditions. As El Nino collapses in the late winter into spring 2016, we're very concerned about the impact of early season crops, particularly tender vegetables in California. The risk of a killing frost in March and too much rain and clouds will very likely have a negative impact. These detailed long-range ag reports are not included in our base $300 a year subscription, but are available for additional fees. By late spring, El Nino will collapse, as the warm waters that built up in the eastern Pacific Ocean will slosh back to the western Pacific, making the waters off the U.S. west coast much colder. This will allow for the polar jet stream to invade the U.S. in spring, with a couple of major cold air intrusions possible. The early May periods of particular concern for the berry growing regions in the Midwest and Great Lakes, as a milder winter will have these fruit bushes sprouting early and then hit by a freeze which can certainly impact the yields later this summer. While many tried to blame climate change on the severe drought in India this past year, the reality is that is exactly what strong El Ninos do. With significant warm waters in the eastern Pacific near the Americas, we get rising air which means more clouds, more storms. At the other end of the Pacific, you tend to have colder waters and sinking air creating dry conditions. This region is responsible for a lot of our sugar supplies and the drought there was devastating. Fortunately, there was a five-year surplus of excess sugar inventories in light of the previous years of favorable moist weather. The yields from this year's crops will be down significantly, so look for sugar prices to keep surging into 2016. But about the time sugar prices soar, the rains will return in 2016 as the Indian monsoon could be epic as El Nino collapses toward La Nina. We expect one of the greatest year-over-year -year changes toward wet weather in decades, bringing the coolest and wettest growing season to India since 2011. The tropical cyclone season is also likely to be very active in the Indian Ocean Basin. This much better crop in late 2016 will start to bring down sugar prices as we head into 2017. We hope you found Episode 2 enlightening, with a better understanding of how WT360 helps you, the farmer, be proactive with less weather risk versus reactive to Mother Nature's ever-changing cycles. Episode 3 will be released in early December as we continue our series, Seeds of Success.